Now, in Paul's letters, you don't hear Paul in that particular part of the story saying that he feels sorry for what he's done. But his letters and his legacy do say exactly that. From that day on, I am the least of these, he says, and he must be greater. Why? Because he saw Jesus for the first time for who he was. He saw that Jesus was after his heart and was after the heart of the matter. That's the Jesus that we find in Scripture. Jesus came not as the presumption of God, but as the true heart of God. Now, Jesus in every case was after that heart of the person, and that's the consistent effort throughout the Scriptures. That's what Jesus' mission was, was to win the hearts of the men and women to transform the world in that way. When we see, when we meet Jesus in the scripture today, we meet the real Jesus. Nathaniel is where we all were and people still are when he says, can anything come good, can anything good come out of Nazareth? We say the same thing about different things along the world. What does the world say is Nazareth today? we come to talk about Jesus. Where is Nazareth today? And they say, can anything good come from Washington? Yeah, that's what somebody said in the first service. What People outside the church are saying, can anything good come out of church? People are religious. You hear that word and it's like a, something in your mouth that shouldn't be there. And that's the way people act today, and that's, that's what they hear. Can anything good come out of these churches? And here's part of the problem. You know, we learn about Jesus Christ through the Scripture, the living Word of God. We're impacted by God's presence when we read the Word. But people today who don't know Jesus, all of us, if we wanted to know something about Jesus, we would look in the... The people who do not know Jesus, the people who are not in church, the people who are not carrying Bibles around, where are they going to go if they were to ask a question about Jesus? Where would they go? Google. Listen, do you hear it? It is social media. And when you pull up on social media, who is Jesus Christ? It's going to say he was, the, he was the presumed son of God. It's not going to talk about the heart of the matter. It's going to give the facts and figures as somebody along the line on the web found it to be. See, social media is drawing them away from who true Jesus is. Heck, there's even a Twitter page for Jesus Christ. Look at this. Hey! <laughs> that is not what I hope he looks like. People are looking for Jesus in the wrong places. They're looking online. And if they don't find them online, we're the next thing they're going to look for. We as Christians, people that walk out of this sanctuary today, they're going to look to us to find out who the real Jesus is. What are we doing with that? What is at the heart of the matter? Are we living as Jesus showed us how to? Are we living in that heart for other people that we meet? What Jesus is really appearing when we go out of here is the Jesus that we as Christians presume him to be rather than follow him. I presume that I should go to church on Sunday, but to live the rest of the week as I choose. That's where the hypocritical Jesus comes out. I gladly spend all week and spend all week in all kinds of activities, but save sparingly to give to God. That's where the self-centered Jesus arrives. I pray for the least and the lost, but like it that somebody else relates to them when they're dirty or on the street or maybe a little bit different from me. That's when the disconnected Jesus arrives. And this week, in the United Methodist Church, the church has gone global again, only not in a good way. 
You see, there are stories out there, and you may have seen them by now because it's in the, the international press, of 80 pastors who said, you know, we've been talking about this homosexual issue, and we can't come to an agreement. There's that side, and there's this side, and, and we can't fix it. So we should just go ahead and split the church. The only problem is that's never what Jesus Christ says. Jesus Christ calls us to the table to be the body of Christ even when we disagree. Does everybody here have the same opinion of everything? Yet God calls us together as the body of Christ. And where in separation is Jesus Christ? You see, I think it doesn't matter which side, if you're on a side that you stand on. What matters is that we come to the table together. That we let Jesus speak to us in our experience together and follow that road. What does the world think of Jesus when we say we should break our church in half? Nothing good, I promise you. Turns out we're exactly what they expected us to be and no more than what's written on Google. But we are much more because of the spirit that is in this place. We are gods together. Jesus still comes not as a presumption of God, but with the heart of God. In the scripture, every case, it was about the heart of the person. And we need to live in Jesus so that others will not fear him or presume him, but really meet Jesus. Then we lead them to the best place to date. The Jesus that we met in scripture and the Jesus that came into our heart. What a beautiful first date that was. There we all experienced grace. As people guilty like us realize Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us right where we sit today. Psalm 32 8 gives us direction. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding whose temper must be curbed with a bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Then I want to continue in the next passage, same verse, next verse in the message. God defies God defiers are always in trouble. God affirmers find themselves loved every time they turn around. Celebrate God. Sing together, everyone, all your honest hearts. Raise the roof. Who is Jesus Christ for me? I grew up in the church, but that wasn't my first date with Jesus. I got to do all the coloring and all the pictures and all the things people told me who Jesus was. But it wasn't until I sat crazy enough in a movie theater watching a movie called A Man Called Peter. My mom took me there and I saw this movie and I saw the way Peter Marshall was a Christian and I saw the way he lived out God. And at the end of that movie... They invited people to come forward in this old dingy theater. And I wanted to meet Jesus. That was my first date. That's who we have to be for the world. There is no other place. They're getting further away from the word and further away from Jesus. And we have to be that first date. Can anything good come out of this church? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.